Acoustic devices could give humans the upper hand in the orca versus yacht battle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. We're back. Episode 60. We skipped 59? No, we filmed 59. It just doesn't come out yet. <laughs> <laughs> we just laid on it'll all come, fronts. It'll come, out, uh, it'll come out tomorrow. It's on YouTube and everything is... Uh, it's all queued up. I just haven't flipped it to public yet, but uh, we'll drop it tomorrow. Okay. Little weekend. I mean, this Surprise. is a hindsight, but I feel like maybe we should have like trickled it out, you know, <laughs> two weeks ago. You know, that's a really uh, astute point. But um, I have been very busy, mm. and same life just kind of, you know. It's cool. We went hard. It's we went hard this year. It's summer, man. It's hard. Yeah. I don't know. In either case, we're back. Though. Episode sixty. We're back. Episode 15 is going to be out before this drops, I promise. Episode, what do you name this episode? Color People Time? Because we're late. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> not, we can't say that. So. Not, <laughs> it's your not, choice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. We'll allow it. It's your choice. We'll allow it, but your choice. Um, uh, all lo- right. Love that. So <laughs> before we get into uh, any of our topics for the day, let's talk about this. What we got? This bourbon that we that have looks that looks exquisite on deck. Now, um, this is a little bit some exciting news. Where I purchased this, right here. I thought you were about to get, drop a bomb on. No, me. I was no. Like, oh, whoa. Right here by Earthwood and Fire. Yeah. This thing right that across from Princeton, yeah. right in that little shopping area. They yep. just opened a new liquor store. Oh, right per- I, I passed that wow. on my way here. And yeah. Wow, fantastic liquor store. Uh, a lot of great options. Okay. And at, interestingly enough, they have a really big selection of non-alcoholic alcohol. I know it's kind of like a new thing. It's non like coming. But they have like say a that again? non-alcoholic alcohol. What did I say? Yeah, you that's said that. what you said. That's what you yeah. said. That's, that's said? correct. I just yeah. wanted to make that's sure accurate. that's what you were saying. Yeah. Because I've never heard those two words together. Yeah, it's like, you know, whiskey that's not whiskey. It's, you know. What's it taste gin like? Gin that's not gin. It's... Synthetic? It's supposed to kind of emulate the flavor, the sensation. You can like make cocktails with it. Uh, Do you get drunk? No. No, 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 no. It's for those that are sober that just want to have the experience of making cocktails. It's like or vegans and like frying It's like foods. non-alcoholic beer, okay. right? Like you get like a Heineken Zero or something. Okay. Um, so they have a pretty good selection of that. But they, they've got a lot of really nice stuff over there. It's not a massive selection, but they have a really healthy amount of like each thing. So like if got you want yeah. tequila, they've got a nice shelf of that. Whiskey. I mean, it's all they vodka. They've they've got some nice well, options. Next, next week's my week, so I'll do that. I recommend before, checking it yeah, out before I get here. Uh, this bottle was recommended to me. By a person that works there? Yeah. Okay. By the owner of the store. What, kind of, what type of people work there? Uh, when I was there, it was uh, one gentleman by himself kind of running the shop. My sense is that it was his store. That's just, that's what was I he, took away from 40s, it. 40s, 50s, 30s? Uh, probably, yeah, 40s, 50s, somewhere in there, I would guess. I'm trying uh, to pitch Very it. knowledgeable. Kind of George clooney Very knowledgeable. Uh, sure, if you'd okay. like. Yeah, That'd be why very not? specific. Not really, <laughs> but... Sure. Does he have the George Clooney salt and pepper? And oh, or, is, <clears throat> or is he more of like a Brad Pitt blonde tip? Guy? Neither of those things. <laughs> uh, you'll just have to go in and meet him for yourself. But uh, he had recommended this somewhat highly. He thought that it was nice as a newer product. Uh, it's a little bit more limited is what he was indicating to me. Okay. And so I went ahead and picked up a bottle. Just thought, why not? Uh, we had the show coming up and I figured let's get into it. So Millum in Green. What's your price point? It's fifty dollars. That's not bad for a gorgeous looking bottle. Fifty bucks. Suggested retail from the manufacturer is forty seven. There you go. So <laughs> pretty close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Inflation. I actually um <laughs> got a yeah, got a it, it was fifty on the tag. He gave me a ten percent discount. Not sure why, but it brought it down to Was you know, he right around was there. he hitting on you? No, I don't think it was that kind of thing. We never um, know until you look back. I think it was just maybe like a <laughs> New store opening kind of thing. Oh, okay. I, don't know. I chatted them up for a little while. They got a reward. He really I liked your mustache. Know. Could have been, dude. Could have been. Um, but anyway, yeah. So recommended this. Uh, my understanding is it's a little bit of a limited run. At least that's, again, kind of how it was pitched to me. It's not something that was, uh, there's tons of it out there. But on the back, I'm not going to read the whole paragraph, but I thought this was an interesting Go for it, uh, buddy. piece. The Millum and Green team are the most experienced craft whiskey makers in the u.s wow the most experienced according to the label the Um, most experienced ever 
Yeah. So it says on the front, let's see, uh, when facing down a great bear, don't play dead. Rather make light of the situation. Keep eye contact and pour a drink for two. And get mauled. This may be. All right. So um, let's dive right in, dude. Pop the top on this. It does have an award on the top. 93 points via the wine enthusiast. That's what they're saying. Huh. Oh, geez. There goes that. Sorry. Very good. Yeah. It's Dang. over. Oh, oh. And the top's off. Oh, no. Oh, that's fucked. You want my knife? Oh, no. Yeah, fuck. To be fair, not to like... I think this is more my fault than it is theirs. I left this in my car overnight. Oh, you think it swelled? Um, I just think that really it, sharp. I just think it got a little, little toasty, man. We're watching him lose a hand. <laughs> <laughs> this we, and, and sanitized all right, the all wound right, all, right. all in one. <laughs> I think I got enough of it now. There you go. Not bad. We finished this episode Satisfying, of Patient First. Uh, in a very <laughs> different way. Okay. It just kind of just broke off. I think that the adhesion in between these two things got compromised due to the heat. heat. That's what I'm guessing. We're going to go with that for the time being. Righto? Um, When we get a second, can we check Isaiah's microphone? Sure. I'm not hearing him. We can certainly check. Just talk loud. (laughs) Just yell. (laughs) I'm not yelling. This is how I talk. All right. I'm going to pass that down to you. Go ahead. Get that around the room. This is weighty. It's a weighty bottle, too. And I like that this top up portion of it is kind of like a skull. Like the, you know what I mean? Where yeah, it has, a, it, it has a nice shape. Yeah, it's got a bulbous really on the top. Yeah, there you go. Yes, bulbous. it's a nice, uh, it's a nice shape. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like a uh, rum yeah. bottle yeah. or something. It's a triple K cask. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so let's pass that around. Um, and on to just some easy light news here in the beginning there we while, go. while that makes its way around. Um, I have a show for you okay. that I've really been enjoying. You may already be what is a it? viewer of this show. It's not on my watch list or anything like that. I just haven't updated it. But Silo, yeah. Apple TV. Yeah. Oh, I, I was thinking about starting I gonna, that. I was going to start it tonight. So, Silo, I've been good. watching. Um, Here's the thing. I've not yeah. watched a lot of Apple TV content. Mm-hmm. Really haven't. I think I have done Servant. I did the one with... Uh, Severance. Severance, that one. Yep. I've dabbled with a few other shows. This is this is up there, though. Surprising. I don't know if it's as yeah. good as a Severance, per se, but the production quality is very on point. Yes. It's very entertaining. All the acting is yeah. very solid. A lot of really good actors and actors. Commons in it. It's a it's a pretty heavy hitter for them, I think. I it I think it was a sleeper. I didn't think I don't think people expected it to be as good as it is. Yes. Uh Chanel. I got caught on late, so she was already on like episode like two or three. Yeah, and yeah. I just was like, "What the fuck? What is going? On? What's going on? What's this? What's this?" And she kept watching. So every time she would watch it, I'd sit down and I followed the whole thing with yeah. it. I just followed it all the way through. I just thought it was a super interesting concept. Yes, and uh, it's, it, you know it plays kind of like mind games, and it has the the TV show formula. Kind of like the TV show um, caricature formula where people are assigned a role and they have to kind of act out that, I guess it's acting, but act out that kind of caricature mm-hmm. of of the person they're perpl- uh, they're playing, yep. where like Common has a, the black turtleneck and black leather jacket yes. the entire season. Uh, she's the sheriff. So yeah. she wears, um, you know, just kind of like sheriff garb, yeah. and the president, uh, no, the it's mayor. Kind of like a, um, like a Matrix or yeah, or, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Hunger yeah. Games, right, or something. right. There's like caricatures uh, of people that really. It was really cool. I thought it was dope. Um, you finished the whole thing? No, I'm oh, okay. not. I so we're, I think, four or five episodes in. But by the time, kind of rewinding a little bit back to my point about it, or oh, your wow. point about it being a little bit of a sleeper. We got like by the time we caught on to it, it was already season, season yeah. one had already been done. Same, yeah. And I had saw uh, just like the other day that they had announced that they're already filming season two. They're in production on that now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it's been great. It's been a lot of fun to watch. A lot of good people in uh, it. Really been, yeah, a knock out of the park for Apple. Way to go! I feel like they don't have many of those, but it's silent. Yeah, one of them. I got so I fell into the Apple TV hole. Um, just had a lot of time because I took off of work to move. Mm-hmm. And so had a lot of stuff like playing in the background yeah. just to kind of fill the space with noise while we like unpack boxes and stuff. So ran through Silo and then we did Platonic. 
doing that. Yes, I know the show. I've not watched it though. How do you feel about that? Uh, very funny. It's mm-hmm. it's Seth Rogen to a T. It's 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 mm-hmm. it's so embarrassing, and I can't. Is remember. it like New Age Seth Rogen or yes, is it, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the concept is uh, him and his best friend, who is a, a woman I can't remember her name. Josh, can you? Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne. Yes, uh, she is hilarious in it. Okay, they were best friends like all through college or whatever, and then ultimately he gets married, and they kind of fall apart, right? And I think her husband finds out that he's getting a divorce and she didn't know. So she's like, oh, I should reach out to him and just make sure he's okay. And what that does is it rekindles their friendship. And now their two worlds are back. Kind of colliding. Colliding. Sure. And her being married with children now and him being a single wreck are, you know, just causing. But ultimately they need the codependence of their friendship to get through these obstacles. And it's just, it's, it's so secondhand embarrassing. Yeah. Like the thing that uh, they go through the scenarios and it's enjoyable. It's, it's very, very Head enjoyable and, and relatable. Like being our, you know, the age we are, you know, you have friends who've gotten married and you've kind of like, yeah. you know, Oh, they're off doing their thing. I'll see them when I see them. And then, you know, rekindling that, that is it more of a drama comedy kind no, of thing? It's or is it like a straight out comedy? Straight out comedy. Like a straight out comedy. Okay. Dramedy. Well, that's what I just asked. You st- <laughs> Dramedy? He literally did say that. <laughs> is, it, is, it like, that? Is, it, is it like a drama comedy or is uh, it straight I'd out say comedy? More comedy than drama. You have like a 40 year old virgin, which is just straight out comedy. And He's, then you have seen like it. a. I'd say I've it's, seen it. It's, it's, uh, it's drama. No. But nothing hard. But then you have like it's a like this 15% is 40. percent drama. So 85% this, this is forty. This is forty. It's around. It's, it's, it's in more. This space. is forty than okay. forty old virgin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very yeah. good. That helps. That context. Is, there we go. We we meet in the middle. There helpful. we go. Yeah. It's great. How is the move, man? Terrible. It's Terrible. the worst fucking thing you can ever do in your life. Is yeah. move. How many uh, days start to finish? <sighs> so because we didn't have to like be out of the place we were in, like immediately. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started the move the week of the f- whatever. So we had filmed on like the 9th or 10th. So that next week we got the keys on like the 16th. And I just, I just every day after work was moving stuff. Yeah. Every day. So I never, I haven't had a day of rest in almost a month. Now, did you, were you just like packing out the car and like making trips? Did Fortunately, you get a U-Haul? Yeah. Did you? Okay. So you what did, I did. Did you do it solo? So I didn't. Okay. So this is what I did. I'll walk you through my whole thing. I packed up as much stuff as I could in my truck. Yeah. I have a midsize SUV. Yep. Put the put the seats down and just loaded it up every day, like two and three runs after and just work. just ran boxes boom, and stuff. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. Every day up until the 25th, which was a Saturday, then I got the U-Haul. And everything that could have went wrong with this move went wrong. With the U-Haul? No, just my life. Or you're just saying throughout the course of this? Throughout the course of this. Everything that could have went wrong went wrong. Was the worst thing that happened? They turned off the BGE the wrong day. So you're in the house. And I'm taking a shit and the lights go out. out. Yeah. What's it like getting that back on though? Isn't it just phone call? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but it still takes a couple hours. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. It's not just like a computer thing. They're not just like. No, because when you disconnection of service is different than a disruption. Oh, okay. So, well, no. All right, but it's not like they come by the house and like pull the thing off the wall, dude. No, no, no. Yeah. It's nah, like somebody you, somewhere in a computer you, is like off. Yeah. You get them back on the line. They're like, oh, okay. All right. Did you want two hours later, we're back. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. But then I forgot two days prior to that, the same thing happened with the Verizon. Got you. So Verizon was out and. I'm, you know, middle of the day working. I'm like, okay, no, we don't have any Verizon. All right. Yeah, no, so I got to call that. them. They missed the transfer date. It was supposed to be pushed back to the t- to the 25th, but they never stopped the order on the 19th. Jumped the gun. Jumped the gun. That's off. Two days later, same thing happened with the BGE. Yeah. Got to get that back on. That's back on. Cuts, you know, ruins the whole day. Mm-hmm. It's trash. So you get that back on. And then Saturday, I got the U-Haul. I go to pick up the furniture. You know, we did a little Value City Boy. Uh, nice little sectional. He sat the on the solid wood people. <laughs> <laughs> Throwback. And, and it wasn't ready, of course, at Value City. Uh, 
you know, it's always, oh, the system. They didn't have it? Or yeah, they didn't like, have it. Yeah. They're like, oh, we we didn't we don't have it here. And I was like, but my receipt says it's here. It's here. And they're like, oh well, we'll just Joke's free. on you. Yeah. So they just gave us free delivery, dropped it off, you it's know, not, a couple days later. It's not bad. Um, so that was the day we did all of the furniture in the house. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. It took about three, four hours. We got everything in there. And then the next week we did the same thing with loading the cars yeah, and just yeah. getting the rest of the stuff. We're we're about eighty percent done as right. far as like being in and unpacked and way to go man i would yeah. cheers you but it's, you're not done yet right oh i think i gotta I, you, you I gotta go back to the old place still no it, it's everything out of the old everything's place. out of the old place. everything is out oh, everything right. is out yeah. Yeah. Okay. so yeah. we're in the new place yeah. i thought when you said 80 percent, i was like oh you still got a couple I, day trips left no 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 we're we're we gotta get you're my, out. You're my, out. my son is still there uh my mother-in-law is, is now in this place and we told him since it's the summer, he's working his first job. Mm -hmm. uh, no pressure on you. We'll get you there before school starts. And he's like, Fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. uh, he's cool and out. He's ready to go though. He's ready to be. He, he, this is the first time. He, we're literally five minutes down the street, but it's the first time he's been away from from mommy in this capacity. Got you. So okay. he's like calling mom every day, yeah. like, "Yo, what's going on? Yeah, like, yeah. are y'all ready for me?" I got you. <laughs> I, I put his bed together and, and all that, so we're ready for him. Hell yeah. yeah. Very good. All right. You, you, what's up? You I went away though. I did. Was it Anguilla? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. How was it? It's great. It's a real bitch to get there. Head back. <laughs> <laughs> How many? It's great though. It's uh, it's very it's very white lotus. It's how it okay. feels when you're there. It's very remote. Uh -huh. It's or like something out of like a James Bond, like a Casino Royale or something. It's it's a crazy Anguilla it's a crazy is, thing. What exactly the West British Indies, I believe. Is gotcha. that right? Is that what it's called? West British Indies. Yes. It is technically Britain. Um, but it is down, it's kind of like in the Aruba space. Uh, okay, gotcha. If you know okay. you know I mean, I don't know if they consider it like in the Bahama area or not. It's it's further south than that quite a bit. But oh, kind of right on the okay. it's north of Aruba, right? All right? It's definitely nowhere near Aruba. <laughs> I thought it was like north of Aruba. It's it's north of, yeah, but everything is north of Aruba. Honestly, there's Aruba. not a single island south All of right, Aruba. Tell me this. Is it closer to Aruba than it is to the Bahamas? It's just in the Caribbean. Distance-wise, yes. There we go. Bahamas, Anguilla, Aruba. Yeah, give me enough time and I'm going to make this work for me, okay? It's mm. directly east of Puerto Rico. There we go. Ah, that helps. Okay. I think that might have been what I was going for, to be honest, That's when I said Aruba, but here we possibly, go. Possibly, yes. doesn't matter. In yeah, it's, case, about, it's about 150 miles east of Puerto what, Rico. What okay. type of tourists are we talking? We got, what we got, we got. What do you mean, tourists? What type of- uh, What are you talking uh, we got, are we more French? Are we more? No, these are people that are coming in from all over the place. All over the place. So okay. it's, um, I don't, and I, I don't want to misspeak about the island because I don't really know it all that well. My understanding is that it's a pretty like, not like deathless, not the right word, but when you like touch down in Anguilla and you're there, like it is pretty, um, like sparse, I guess gotcha. maybe is the right word. Like it's not, you know, you're driving through. Wide open. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like poor towns and like that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And then you hit these resorts. Money makers. And it's like yeah. insane, right? It's like two different worlds. Yeah. But just on the other side of the fence kind of thing, right? And I think there's probably plenty of other places that are similar to this. Yeah. But you're, the whole Caribbean. Yeah, you're you just... just it's like a whole, it's, it's just like a different world. It's a little bit, right? Like you like leave these like properties and then you're just kind of like in... The a, resort. In, in a degree of poverty. Did you leave almost, the resort so. any? Mm, uh, a little bit, but we were we were like bopping from like resort experience to resort experience. Oh, I got you. It wasn't like I was like heading out and finding like the local puff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, very, very nice. And awesome. You just got back go. from Jamaica. Yeah. Oh, uh, you got you fuckers are trying them stamps up, huh? dude. When we were coming back through, y'all saw uh, each other. <laughs> no, 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 but when we were coming back through, like customs. There was like a group of like 30 chicks that were all coming from Jamaica and they all had the, these matching shirts. Like it was like a giant party and it was like Jamaica 2023. And like you could, they were all obviously just coming from there. And I was like, I know somebody has been there. I'll see him around here. But I was like, I know somebody. That's just there. I know about that Jamaica shit. Bro. But I was like, damn, like this shirt order must have been something serious. Something Probably like a bachelorette party or something. Yeah. Like I don't know. 
I'm not sure. But yeah, it was a good time. Good trip. Doobie, um, where'd you go? Yeah. Uh, absolutely nowhere. I've been here okay. the whole time. Not literally here. Yeah. Well, but I should have got you over to the house to help me. I mean, I would have. Yeah. Should have dropped Next move. Ne- next That's move. right. Next move. <laughs> no, next move, I'm getting movers. So I'll hot wire the BG for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, absolutely getting movers next time. I'm never doing this again. I'm still hurting. Yeah, movers is a little bit. I, now, to clarify, I've not personally hired movers myself. When you moved in here, did you do but, it yourself? Yes. Oof. But we had significantly less stuff at the time. Like, we didn't have any of this furniture. We didn't have any of that furniture. We didn't have, I mean, it was. Okay, because I'm thinking way from the old place stuff. to new place, I don't re- recognize it. And any of this we stuff. did. I mean, we packed a bunch of stuff like in boxes and did that whole thing, but we moved everything over in one U-Haul. I oh. have a photo of it and it's pretty remarkable how like tightly like packed and organized and everything it is. I mean, we yeah. literally just barely could shut the door, but we did it all in like one You do the 17 thing. or the 18 footer, 19 footer? I can't remember. I didn't realize there was so many I don't many think options. there's a big difference between 17 and 18. I, mean, I met there's a 17 and then there's a 19 and then there's a 15. Yeah. Where they'll really get you is when you order like the 15 or the 17, but they don't have that. So they give you like a 32. <laughs> <laughs> then your whole world changes. Now you're a trucker. <laughs> and I've had, I have had that happen. Yeah. It's the worst experience. <laughs> when you roll That's up. That's a big boy. Yes. Because everybody wants the modest box truck. It's like, you know, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. Everybody wants. So that's, you can order those all day long. It doesn't mean that's what you're going to get. You're going to get that or something larger is what it says in the fine print, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So I showed up one time <laughs> and got, a, I'm, I'm not even kidding. It had to be like, it was in like a 30 foot range. Like it was massive. And oh. this was, this was when I was. <laughs> it's got a string. <laughs> this was when I was driving back. I lived in Orlando for a while for school. And this is when I was driving mm-hmm. back from Orlando And I was like, I, I, you know, I felt very confident in myself. So I was like, no big deal. I got the 15 foot box truck. This is going to cover me. Mm -hmm. And then I got the car hitch that hooks on the back of that. Put your car on. And I was going to drive up. So I show up. Now I've got a 32 foot (laughs) double the size with a car hitch on the back. So I, I mean, I could have parked my car in the (laughs) U-Haul and packed like what I needed. I had so much room. (laughs) I mean, now the benefit to having that much room is you can just start throwing crap. Because there's just so much space. You could have been. Um, never mind. But I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there. It was an awful. But, I drove straight through from little, Orlando to here. Got here at ungodly hour. So I've never driven with a hitch. Like, how difficult is that? Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's you. It's it depends on whether or not you have. Not this is gonna sound weird. Not like not like the mind for it, but you have to like spend a little bit of time getting comfortable with it before it makes sense in your head. Yeah, and then you got once a tail that's on happened, you, yeah. then you're good. Got you. But like if you just drop into it <laughs> and you've never done it before, it can be very daunting, and yeah. you can kind of I think get yourself in a tight spot. My fear is. I'm not going to hitch it correctly. <laughs> the car just going to drop off. <laughs> and I'm cooking it oh. on 95. <laughs> and boom, boom. And the car just final destinations. Everybody behind me. And that I have part, no idea. <laughs> that part is not as hard to mess up. I thought you meant like the maneuvering of it all. Oh, as you're driving I, yeah, around. I think maneuvering. The hitching part's a little harder to screw See, up. Okay. There's, right. there's a couple of like, especially if you're doing like the U-Haul stuff. There's some Got like, you. There's some like they make it pretty easy There's to some secure. checks in place. Yeah. You'll I'm, know like if things are going the wrong way. Me, I'm just quick. like, oh, we hit a bump, boom, boom. And then I'm just going <laughs> yes. to keep on going. Yeah, you show up eight <laughs> states later <laughs> with no, no car. car. He said we hit a bump. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, so much lighter. We're going that, so bump, much that bump killed us so many people <laughs> midway through the Carolinas. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, hitching is not bad. I thought you were talking about like backing up and like doing all mm. that with the car on the back of it. That too. That part, like that's that's what I was talking about. That's a little trickier. like when you were pulling in the gas stations, you just kind of did the whole kind of roll in, roll out. I did out. pretty solid. The when you're when you have something that long and you're driving like from you're on ninety five or something, most of the gas stations are laid out and configured so for larger like yeah. rigs like that. Not that it's a rig, but like a Rigs. larger situation. <laughs> um, when I got into Baltimore, when I got back here, I had to get gas. And it was a crazy hour. So I was totally by myself. 
and I destroyed a gas station like grass like i don't know like bend or whatever when like coming into it was just so tight like it's not designed for any of that so like i was like driving all over it to get into it my like i drove the car over it the alarm on the car is going off because that thing's back there shaking but there is no other way you can't get in and out of the gas station it's not designed for this it's you not, can't do it it's so, not Gas stations. Suck. Anyway, um, it was a it was a pretty solid trip all the way up until that point, and then I got real nervous because like, because you were in Baltimore now. No, because I was oh. like, if anything broke, it was during that. Oh, during, during the, that, moment. that moment. Yes, yeah. and I made it all this way like pretty flawlessly, and I was like, damn it! I was like, it it would be. Yeah, bad. I took out a handicap sign last week with the U-Haul. I just acted like it never happened. Like it's gone altogether. Yeah, it's gone. Like it, it's gone. Yeah. And I took it back. They didn't charge me like any damage. I didn't really see any damage to the truck either, but uh, that sign is kaput. Toasty? Yeah. I love it. All right. Now that we've <laughs> wasted a bit of time. Now we've caught up. Good amount of time. 25 minutes. We've all caught up. Yeah. Right, but, We're going to dive into the list. Um, I think Josh probably is a pull. You updated yeah. the list? I thought I not from we this haven't... week, but it was pretty updated last okay. week. So we're just gonna go with that. And we hadn't we, talked in so long. If we come I up with anything, we'll we could have just yeah. yeah down the news on list on the fly. But before we do that, thoughts on this? This is delicious. It, it's great. This is very good. The only one marks. he enjoys it. Right, very like, high marks. He's my barometer. Like he's yeah. like they, they might be the best distillers. There's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I've, I've right. heard that claim. Yes, there's nothing. <laughs> right. There's nothing like I could say negative about it. To be honest, like it's got no, really man. good flavor. Yeah. It's very easy to drink. It's got good color. <laughs> it is not. There is. I mean, it's bourbon, but there's no bite. No, not a all. single bite. Like it's not. It does not linger with you. No. So Very they claim cool. they claim so they've got two distilleries, one in Texas, one in Kentucky, and they claim that the match the uh, mash bill is the same: seventy percent corn, twenty percent rye, eight percent barley. So they the triple cask is that they'll take from the Texas, from the Kentucky, and then they source from Tennessee. Mm. So this is their fun little claim here: is that it's from three states and they all come together to make the perfect taste and yeah, blah blah blah. I just wouldn't it be easier to just do it all in one place? Listen, I don't run a I don't run a distillery. I guess okay. And yeah. are you really going to question what was it the the just most delicious <laughs> the best distillers in the what, what was the bottle yeah. hey, man, best hey. distillers in the U.S. Listen, yeah, something like they're that. Master yeah, blend, they're master I don't blender. Know. Heather Green, it's, she knows what she's doing. There it, it is, is very very good. I am. I'm gonna double up. It's exceptional. Mm. Exceptional. All right. Is that going to fall off in there? Uh, I'm going to keep it off for the time being. I have other caps. We'll just replace it. Um, news list, baby. Yeah. yeah let's go. Uh, summer movies disappointing at the box office. It's oh, the first one. Okay. That's interesting. That's an interesting yeah. topic. So a lot of, um, I feel like, let me do this real quick. I did myself a favor when I wrote this note. I'm pretty sure. Great. Okay, perfect. You got the numbers? I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good for you. So there's a couple of movies here. The Flash, right? Being pulled from theaters. Yeah. Okay, so currently 211 million. When I wrote this note, this was a week ago, 211 million worldwide. Oh, that's was rough. what it had pulled in. And the budget they was like 250, right? They're estimating that it's going to lose $200 million. Jesus Christ. Because whatever the budget is, generally speaking, marketing is double that, which seems... They wanted Absolutely to make a billion insane yeah. to me. But if a movie is 250, the general rule of thumb is that they dropped 250 into marketing on top of that. So you really gotta you make know, a billion. Yeah. They're at uh, 248 right now as of today. today. Great. <laughs> and so what was the what was the budget? Uh two hundred to two twenty is and what then it claims you here. Double that with the marketing. So yeah, they, they're still in the red. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna be in the red on that. Elementals, which is the Pixar movie. Clark Pixie, is very excited uh, about that too. Uh, 121 uh, worldwide when I wrote this note. Um, and they're saying that the loss, th I could not find exact figures on this, but they were saying that the loss would be in the hundreds of millions. Mm. How? It's animated. It yes, but because it it's Pixar, it takes a long time to develop these yeah. and create these. They're pouring tons of money into that. You gotta the pay marketing the talent. and promotion yeah. of it is, you know, those happy meals extreme. Costs. So yeah. again, if it sits at, if it makes 120, 150 million, something like that. We're sitting at 193 on a budget of 200. There you go. Ooh, yeah. For Elemental. For that's Elemental. a Disney, yeah. yeah right. So again, this that's another, you know, pretty I'm, significant loss. I'm sure they'll make a lot of that back when it goes to streaming. 
They're saying that the Little Mermaid uh, broke even. <sighs> Rough. Which is another Disney yeah. property. Rough. Um, it might be more than that now, but at the time they were saying that it was going to probably break even. Um, it's only 528 now. Oh, 528. So not a lot so from your numbers. Pretty much yep. going to break mm-hmm. even on that. Uh, Dial of Destiny, which is Indiana Jones, also yeah. Disney. Uh, they have been scaling that back uh, consistently as far mm-hmm. as what they're estimating that that will uh, make and projecting that they are not going to break even on that either. Oof, so it's interesting on that one. That's another right? Disney one, yeah. As of um, today also, they're at 160 on a budget of 250 to 300. Mm, stinks. Yeah. So they got to really start cruising. So if you're yeah. 600 million to break even. Oof. Got to make moves. Yeah, and Flash definitely isn't doing it. Their marketing budget is uh, around three thirty. There you go. Yeah, you got to think you're licensing out, right? Your toys, merch, you got to produce all of that, and then you're paying for commercials. You're paying for it's a lot of spots, TV spots, trailer spots. It's a lot of money. So. Disney is set to lose a billion dollars on what? their last eight studio releases, which includes Lightyear, Thor 4, Strange World, Black Panther 2, Ant-Man 3, The Little Mermaid, and Elemental, all of which called all of which cost 2.75 billion, but only returned 1.86. I think that's just the cost of doing business, though. They lost a billion dollars on their last eight movies. <laughs> that's not like a traditional Disney track record. Bro, I lose $20. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm tearing the car apart. A billion? Yes. A billy? Down the drain, dude. Uh, A lot of big misses here, though. They're going to have to yellow tape my office if I work at Disney. <laughs> It, I'm responsible for us losing a billion dollars. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't know if you can point the finger at any one person necessarily. Maybe the CEO, perhaps. That board meeting is. Yeah, it's kind of tight. That's yeah. gotta be a tight. It's, it's gotta be a tight, tight meeting. It's gotta be, not be looking the best. All right, Mr. Ball, we're looking at a billion dollar loss. Um. Now I think Guardians did okay. I think, I think that um made some money. Perhaps that was not on the list that I saw. In the red, like the red list. So, yeah, yeah, that was not in the red list. I think that that, that did okay. What it is should, the next Marvel movie? The Marvels? Uh, yeah, the Marvel Elementals. You know, they kind of do it in cycles. They do a kid movie, they do a Disney movie, then they do a Marvel movie. So Marv- the Marvels is what fall? Yeah, October, November, something Gotta like be. that. Okay. Um, and I would imagine that unless reviews for that are stellar, I would guess that's probably also a loser as well. Mm, yeah. I think, I feel like Marvel is like in a real bad <sighs> spot. Shitter, shitter yeah. right now. Yeah, it's a real, real bad spot for them at the moment. Anyway, and I thought that was an interesting uh, couple of stats coming mm-hmm. out of, uh, we're halfway through the summer now. Uh, obviously, plenty of big movies left. Still. Yeah, we still Oppenheimer, got. Oppenheimer. Uh, we still got. Um, Ta- TC to go. Yep. Yeah. With uh, uh, Mission, Mission Impossible. We still Barbie. got Fate. Wait, Fast and Furious come out yet? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Fast is that Furious done? Came, I it, don't think it did well, but I don't think it, it did well. I it's know out. Transformers actually did well. Yeah, I, I'm hearing Transformers and, and it was, good. Was, was pretty good. Um, it's always interesting to me, Transformers somehow. <laughs> it somehow does well. I went and saw it, and I was not expecting nostalgia. It to be it's one of those things. You enjoyed it though. Yeah, it was great. Oh, all right. It's just okay. one of those franchises where, regardless of what, what, regardless of what the story is. It will. I just feel like it'll kind of do semi well. Yeah. Ninja Turtles will do semi well. For the Transformers will do semi well. It depends, I think, on the amount of money you put into it, though. That too. Yeah. That's such a big factor because I think the reality is people are not going to the movies like they used to. They're not. That has. I yes, like I think people do have returned obviously since COVID, but the numbers are not there. And I think I don't think I don't think they're playing it safe with kid movies. People aren't really taking their kids to the movies. Yeah, that's a good call. Maybe you know, more kid movies could go to you know, streaming like sooner. We, we, I think back to Super Mario. That was super successful, though. They crossed the billion-dollar mark on that. So it wasn't that many kids in there. 
That's also a good point because they're really playing on the whole nostalgia thing with the older generations. Mm. And they want to take their kids to go see it because it's like a- A kid movie. Yes. But you get a you get something like The Elementals, which is not, there's no lore there there's, that's pretty established. I was going to say that. Like, so you get lore with Super Mario. You get lore with Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. And then Elemental and Clark's like, Daddy, I want to see Elemental. And there's another one, I think it's called The Teenage Kraken or whatever like mm-hmm. that. And I'm like, well, Clark, I understand, but mommy and daddy don't want to see that. So I don't know if it's worth, you know, worth us really like taking a whole trip to like do it. We can like literally yeah. wait till it's on streaming or, you know, <laughs> wait for just mm. <coughs> oh, Yeah. You know, and do it that way at home with the TV. So um, quick, quick call back there. So <laughs> fast, fast 10. Is sitting at seven hundred twenty million right now. It's mm-hmm. on a yeah. three forty budget. Jesus Christ! Not so, terrible. Three forty is the budget. Yeah, Let's hefty. Say for cars, hefty. I know, and I thought that too. But for if three forty is the budget, then for cars, total is probably going to be around seven. Of course, but I guess I think the the remarkable thing to me here is that, um, right, it's a it's the tenth movie in a franchise, and they're still spending three hundred forty million. Okay, on at it. this point, you got to get the formula down, right? right? And they, I mean, it looks like they have. Though I mean, it's definitely on its way there. Uh, Transformers is sitting at three eighty six on a two hundred million budget. See, so as it was right, close yep. to breaking. Yep, but guess. yeah, Super Mario looks like the winner here by far. One point three billion on a one hundred million budget. Ooh, yeah. that, that crushed. That's what it is. Waha. That crushed. Yeah. They're gonna be they're gonna be popping those out so fast. At this point, not gonna know what to do with it. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. We oh, that's right. It. You went with that. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. loved it. It was great. So good. So much fun to watch. Um, moving on, uh, Jonathan Majors, legal troubles County, continue. He had a draw He's four in his pocket. And in court yeah. dealing with some of this stuff, but it seems to me like whatever it is. It's going his way. You think it's going his way? Well, that I'll I've, not, I've not read anything recently okay. about it, but the fact that he was in court and there was like- They're in discovery right now. And there was, that all felt like- there must be more to the story, yes. not less. They are in discovery right now where, the, you know, all of the information is presented. Yes. In that, the lady that is accusing him of, you know, whatever whatever those charges are, was subsequently arrested due to what was presented in discovery. Kind of like this. this so what was presented was, a, was a, a, apparently substantial enough for him to now press charges against her. Yeah. And she was then arrested for uh, alleged assault, I believe. Or Interesting. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. So he kind of had like a, you know, counter argument there. I missed that last part. I didn't see that in the news, but um, interesting yeah. uh, turn of the tables, if yeah. you will. I kind of felt as if once it really started to solidify in the courts, there were a couple of people that came out trying to like kind of back him up and say, hey, you're not guilty until, you know, yeah. proven guilty or whatever, innocent until proven guilty, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh man, like what must be coming out and discovery must not be very good. Yeah. And I was like, you know, at this stage in the game, he slash Disney have to have offered her checks to go away. Something. Something's got to be. Have to have offered her something and she turned it down. Or, or he knew. Okay, in the state of New York, if if you are in, in whatever for what he was accused of, and if you you have to be arrested, right? So that boom. So now he's arrested. He is standing his ground the entire time. Like I'm, I'm innocent. I did not. I didn't do these things. Sure. Whatever. Whatever. And now we get to discovery. The the facts are presented. Now she's arrested. I don't know if it's just kind of like you know a petty thing that he's like you know no arrest her too or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or it's actually as as he said in the beginning that I didn't do anything. This was all her. And now maybe yeah, I don't I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll this, have to wait. So to, this story's dated the twenty seventh of June. And it said a week prior, he had met with NYPD detectives, quote, to present them with evidence of what really happened that, that, that night. And within hours of viewing the evidence and conducting their own thorough investigation, the NYPD found probable cause to arrest Grace Jabari for assaulting Jonathan Majors. Considering this development, we extend our gratitude to the NYPD detectives for their efforts, his lawyer said. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
The actor mm-hmm. said a drunk and hysterical Jabari attacked him on a street corner in Chinatown <laughs> on March 25th. He alleged Jabari, a dancer, scratched and slapped his face, causing pain. Pain? <laughs> pain. <laughs> Bad lava. <laughs> pain. Okay. Right. Well, well, the yeah. saga continues. There it is. Yeah. It seems like he's still Here in the uh, Marvel Universe. Yeah, I don't... Now. You know, these these billion dollar companies they're definitely vetting you know the information that's you know they have their own investigators the private contractors PIs and detectives and people so who are if you're thinking that the mouse was like these claims are bogus we're just gonna ride this out I'm not gonna say bogus I'm gonna say we have enough information from our people to say Let's just sit on it and not say anything so we don't look like what we looked like with Johnny Depp. You see what I'm saying? That's a really great call. Right? We made this mistake with Johnny Depp. It came out. He was, in, you know, legally, he was not, not in the wrong. Yeah. So if we make this mistake again, it could look bad on us that we don't know how to also conduct sure. an investigation. Right, point with point our point. talent. So yeah. let's just kind of wait for it and just kind of see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. I like that. Very good. Next item. Social media ruining concerts. Oh, yeah. Oh. This was a fun piece. <laughs> Social media altogether is just This has nothing to do with movies. But have you been noticing, and I'm sure others in the room have as well, all of the people who are getting hit in the face <laughs> with objects at mm-hmm. concerts now? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a new thing. On social media, where people are throwing phones, like random objects, or, yeah, things, and they're hitting people, artists in the head. I've seen, I've seen performing. it the other way. The artists are throwing the stuff back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. But it had to get there in the first place. Yeah, there in the first place. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I just saw a thing the other day. I had a whole list of people, but um, there's another artist, Kelsey Ballerini. She just got hit yeah. in the face like saw two that. nights ago. I saw that, yeah. Mm. Got decked straight in the head. Somebody threw a phone at Chris Brown. So I guess the thing. Well, with the, I mean, that's actually that, that's the best thing that could happen to Chris Brown. I feel it like was either, I, I can't BB, remember if you believe in karma. BB Rexa, baby Rexa, BB yep. Rexa. BB, she got yes. hit in the face Oof. Uh, with a phone. Fan throws uh, mother's ashes at. at I pink. saw yes. that. That pink. Whoa. I saw that uh, video. Ava Max gets uh, hit in the face. Fan rushes the stage. Fan throws a bag of her mother's ashes Yuck. on stage during the Pink performance. Pink. Yep. Um, that is- and then there's also a video of a fan uh, pelting Harry Styles in the face with Skittles. Stop. That's funny. <laughs> hey, and you can see him. The rainbow, bitch. <laughs> you can see him like trying to wrap a song up, and he's like, oh. <laughs> "That's got a sting, yo." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And if it's a yellow skittle, you're not gonna see it. Coming. It's kind of getting wild <laughs> out there. The lights, no. <laughs> Although uh, you will notice that the like, you know, I don't think anybody's hitting Beyonce or Taylor Swift in the face with anything. No, she's got snipers on the roof. That, that ain't happening. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and maybe it's like a are, distance those, thing. Those Swifty yeah. cameras are blocking them things, man. You're not hitting. This, you're not hitting Taylor. You're not hitting Beyonce. You're not hitting Drake. Yeah, you could try. <laughs> you could try. You get close enough to drink. You could, you could try. 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 Um, but yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I know you're not hitting Beyonce, and I know you're not hitting Taylor Swift. So they are. They live in like an echelon of like protection. Like you're not touching them. You might not come out alive if you try. You may not make it out of the venue. Yeah. Uh, but. I mean the the whole throwing stuff on stage has been around since like I don't know. 1400s <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> like tomatoes bras panties you see in the 70s like they used to throw their bras and panties and crap on stage so you read those news articles and you in your mind think <laughs> it's the same it's the same as that thing. yeah listen so getting hit in the phone they're hitting <laughs> the face with, <laughs> with the phone. phone with the phone is the same as getting hit with a tomato my problem is and I'm sorry, but I'm going in a rabbit hole of this this uh, this theory is where were they getting tomatoes? You bring them with what? You. Why do you throw them? Are you talking about in the 1400s? Yeah, or they grew them. The ground. But what what in your brain was like? Let me take these tomatoes. A couple of pieces here. One, yeah. is that a myth 
that was just like perpetuated by like media cartoons and, and media it was just as a like, child. Boo, like yeah. Or was throwing tomatoes actually a thing? A thing. At you, a certain point, you in give time. me a few minutes and I'll All finish right. this. So that's part one. one. Yeah, yeah. And in part Josh, two, yeah. I do think getting your hands on a tomato is not that hard. I have tomatoes outside right now. I could go get one. No, you don't. I do. I grow oh, tomatoes. You do got a tomato I could hit farm. you in the face with one right now. <laughs> Why would you just have a tomato farm? You just armed with tomatoes. Tomato 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 <laughs> I think. For, okay, here's the deal. Tomatoes are incredibly easy to grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like super easy. I learned how to grow Anybody them. Anybody can grow them. So they're very plentiful. During certain seasons, like you're going to have a lot of them and they all like, for the most part, like 80% of them all hit like at the same time. You can't eat all of them. So you have some leftovers. You're not going to be able to Why don't you make some all. ketchup? I don't um, know, dude. That's not what they were thinking back then. When they were throwing tomatoes in. And also. I'm going to agree with that, actually. What were you going to say? I said, and also, you know. You got tomatoes, especially if you got like small cherry tomatoes. You're snagging on them. The guy sucks. <laughs> you just snacking on cherry fair. tomatoes at the Beyonce here. concert? All right, so the first reference... Of throwing tomatoes? Well, hold on. No, of, of just tomatoes in a cookbook okay. in England wasn't until 1752. All right, so I'm 300 years Fairly off. Fairly uncommon. Um, so they weren't cooking tomatoes. They were just eating well, them raw. Yeah, yeah which, is, which is still, right, quite a ways after Shakespeare's Globe Theater. However... Um, there's the first major throwing of rotten vegetables at a stage act happened rotten. in 1883. Well, that's the whole point. The tomatoes were rotten. That, that's the, the, the idea. That's why you have the website Rotten Tomatoes. Yes. Happened full in 1883. For me, full circle moment. Wow. Um, and then continuing with, with fruit, um, there are references to like I um, said, fruit. turnips. Um, being thrown at Caesar Augustus in 63 How AD. How dare you throw these tomatoes but that's, at me? that's fairly isolated. Anyway, regardless, the idea of throwing fruit, I think, is a fairly modern thing. I would agree okay. with, with Taylor. All right. In fact, there is a fruit festival in Spain um, that celebrates the tomato harvest, and uh, that started in 1944. So Okay. Damn, dude. We're busting all kinds of myths on there this There it shit. is. I love it. Check yeah. us out. Yeah. All right. What's the next item on this list? Next up on the list hey. is, um, oh, the first episode of Silo. Oh, we Moon can Witch. rush this. Yeah. But they, they premiered it. Uh, this is obviously, these notes are old. They premiered it on Twitter. They put the first episode, the whole thing out on Twitter for this, whatever reason. Uh, Apple, Apple did. TV? I don't know why. Hmm. I guess just to get people, like another marketing method of getting people interested. It probably was free. What did I, I say know. on the way here? Uh, what, what did what you did say you on the say? way here? Well, tell the rest of us. We were in the car. <laughs> And you know, right? You know, right now we're in a uh, we're in a in, social media an app boom, app boom, right? Yesterday there was Threads came out, the yeah. Instagram version of, of Twitter. Twitter. Yep. Before that, yes, the, the day before that was uh, a new app called Spill, which is you know kind of like a Tumblr type, Twitter type. Uh, okay. So we're just in a resurgence of like, well, not a resurgence, a surgence of new social media apps. And he asked me, you know, like, what what do you prefer? And I said, I, uh, personally, I don't know if I prefer one or the other, one over the other, but I think what's going to happen is that the regurgitation and digestion of information is going to be now tailored to what sponsors are going to pay for, right? Like with Apple TV putting all of their, putting that movie on Twitter, right? Which is now there is a partnership. People are going to have to gravitate to Twitter to watch Silo. With um, whatever Instagram is going to do with threads, it's going to be something. And I compared it to uh, when we got the st- music streaming boom. Right. There was title. You're saying that brands are going to pick right, sides. Right. You're going to have to pick what you want specifically based upon the content that's provided with it. But are you consuming a lot of third party content on social platforms? With that too. That that comes with I it. Because I don't. Like I, it, like I saw that announcement that they were doing the first episode of Silo on Twitter. I didn't watch it on Twitter. No, I, I'm not. But it's a great advertising I thought it was piece. an interesting advertising I didn't. Component. I didn't even know but that. the real question is like how much of that content that doesn't matter. Like if Amazon prime comes along and is like, we're going to premiere stuff on 
threads yeah. alongside their app. They're never not going to premiere it on their app. It's just going to be a way of getting people. We're getting who don't people there. More visibility. Prime. Yeah, it's just a it's visibility. It's a shuttle. It's just to get people to to go to go yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now so they're, it's not like they're putting original content on there. No, exclusively. It, it's it's really just to get it's a marketing piece, right? So like, how are our companies now going to utilize these different avenues of marketing? I think it gets away from. You know, all, essentially, it's social, it's social media, but it's going to get away from what we think social media is to these companies because they they're, they're going to use it mm. for different intentions. I got you. So essentially, it'll become actual social media and not social connections. There you go. What we think. There you go. It's a great, great way to sum that up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Interesting perspectives. You've there's been so many threads? of them. There's, there's. Did you use Threads? I, I downloaded it. I got the gist of it. it. It's literally Twitter, but uh, you log in with your uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. log in, you follow all of the same people. Yep. Uh, but you know they have to then follow you back. So it is that that dichotomy there. Mm-hmm. And then um, you you engage in conversation versus a post with a picture. You have the option to add a picture, but you just kind of like. Like Twitter, you just kind of like yeah. talk it out. Yeah, people can uh, rethread it. I just coined that. I don't think they really sure. say that. Uh, and comment. You can add an image or what have you. And um, so yeah, it's it's literally it's literally the, the same. Yeah, it's, it's missing a lot of functionality because it's, I feel like it's it's newer. Very but I think new. that people also, in some cases, might prefer that. Yeah. I think some of the apps do get a little overly complicated. I feel yeah. that way about, you know, Instagram and like TikTok and stuff like Instagram that. Instagram does feel like it just, or even like Facebook, right? It feels like it just becomes this thing that's so like ornate. It's like, I don't it's even know how to work Facebook to wrap anymore. Your head around it so anymore. complicated. So it might benefit them to actually just keep it simplified and stripped yeah. down. I think that was one of the things that kept Twitter around as long as it it's has very been simple. around yeah. is because it's just been pretty consistent. Like once you are embedded in it and you know the ins and outs, you are just good to go. You know, you can be you a know. super user and get into like lists and, yeah. and you know, different type of notifications. But ultimately you follow who you follow and you see it and yeah. you can retweet what you like and what you don't and keep it moving. Um, but I don't know. I think the the changes that have come under the new leadership, people aren't uh, they aren't taking to it, and I think the validity that came with Twitter and its verification process, uh, now that that being gone, kind of takes away from how important it, it 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 was, right? Yeah, I mean, Facebook offers the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can buy your check marks now, which is, I think there's pros and cons to that, obviously. Yeah. I don't think you should. Um, I think that should be a. But the real question probably boils down to whether or not you want to be, do you want to expand your integration into the Facebook ecosystem further than you already have? Right. Right. Like, do you like their rules and do you like that, Mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, that so. product. If you do, then it probably makes more sense to use Threads versus Twitter. Twitter is a little bit still kind of on an island in its of its own. Yeah, it's not really. Yeah, like Facebook is just kind of thirteen years in the now. game now, so yeah. it's kind of you know even the, even even with the Elon takeover, it's still functionally it's still the same as it was. It's mm-hmm. just kind of different. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. More or less. So, yeah, the great app boom of twenty twenty three. Indeed, uh, nice. Joshy boy. Yeah. Um, I just had to read through the second one because I didn't get your wording, but I know what you're talking about. Um, the the killer whales, the orcas <laughs> attacking boats. Yo, what's okay? How do so, you not get that? No, it just the wording of it. Killer whales. Here's the words. Here's what he wrote. Orcas turn up on boaters, <laughs> leading to the development of orca <laughs> defense systems. And I thought, turn up. What did they? Oh, I oh, get it. Okay, orcas right. turn up. All right. I didn't see the note. Because I, I just <laughs> continues. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> Acoustic devices could give humans the upper hand in the orca versus yacht battle. <laughs> That's right. I should have read the whole thing. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So the orcas have been like turned. That was like a thirty orca like party, right, in the middle of the ocean or something. They're no, they're all over the place. It's happening all and over. They're all attacking over the world. boats all over the world. Good for them. Get out and of I, my water. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think the running like. 
theory is that one of them, and I think they've identified which one it was, got hit by a boat. And they're out for revenge. And then it, then it like decided it was going to like seek some kind of revenge on boats. And it's been teaching this to, to his other friends, other orcas. <laughs> and now it's like making its way around the globe. So orcas are like popping off. As and they should. Sure. Of course. It's a little terrifying if you're on the boat. I would say depends on the size of the boat. Depends really. on the size of the boat. Right. If, I mean, if you're in a little submarine, it's kind of horrible. <laughs> well, um, if you're not there anymore, <laughs> okay. yeah. war start. Uh, <laughs> oh, warriors! Um, but anyway, <laughs> there, I guess there are some companies now that are seeing an opportunity. They're de- designing like acoustic devices, acoustical devices that basically, I guess, fend off from orca attacks. And I suppose the theory there is that you're going to have to be putting these on boats moving forward Free if you don't want to get attacked by orcas you know it's really funny that you say that so right after you know the the story of um what's this uh, the movie with i'm the captain now what is that movie sully no, no, that's no. the plane. Captain Phillip. Captain, Captain Phillips, thank you. Yeah. So after it's the, the same events, movie though, right? No. After the well, I mean, plane. Different guy. Same Sully's guy, the plane. Same right. guy, same, different. Yeah, right. Got you. Same anyway, guy. so after that, different thing. All the cruise ships put these acoustic deterrents on them. So that they and they were super cool. They're like yay big, like a foot and a half, two foot He's diameter. Doing this if you yeah. can't see, I know that's why I described the okay. size, right? They're yeah. circle, circle, like and they're just season. mounted right, right on the deck that you mm-hmm. can walk by. And when you aim it, it puts out a like, tone like an that will just blow your eardrums, like two hundred yards, but only within that small uh, beam. It's like a laser of sound wow. for these cruise ships. If they get attacked by pirates, they can turn it down to deter the pirates. We're coming full circle now where we're fighting. We're now fighting the ocean <laughs> with very similar devices. It's fighting seems. back to the water. Like, that's oh right. Oh my God. Yeah, there- and those were cool. That, I mean, it literally was just like six inches deep, two foot diameter. And it shoots and it, out a and sonic blast. And it will blast. blow your freaking eardrums just from there to the water level. Oh, my what? gosh. Are there video examples? I would. I could find one. There's got to be. I've seen like every once in a while it pops up on Instagram where they're like defending boats from pirates. And it's always been like assault weapons. I've never seen uh-huh. a sonar gun. Every time I've seen a that video about rare. pirates, they're always on like an inflatable mattress yes. with a, like a... <laughs> Yes. Lawnmower attached to it. Well, you gotta sneak up, dude. flying through the ocean. <laughs> gotta sneak up. Where the fuck did y'all get this Kmart boat? <laughs> yeah. You know the other side. And of I'm though, supposed to be scared of y'all. The other <laughs> side of it though is, are they gonna show them on a really nice boat, like <laughs> no, with no, machine right. guns and yeah. shit? Right? Of course they're I gonna know, tell us. I know for a that fact they're a bunch of fucking swashbucklers. Yeah, and, yeah. I know that there's like real pirates with like. Out here with like legit, legit yeah. vessels, but every time they show them on the news, it's like a blue and yellow. Uh, <laughs> there's probably inflatable also tube. inflatable boat that they've stolen. There's from probably a ship. also like a likelihood that you're gonna lose the boat, yeah. so they probably don't want to go out there with something that's of high value when yeah. you know it's just gonna get wrecked. Because the idea is probably just to get onto the other one, right? Yeah, and then to deep six the one you came, yeah, on, exactly. I would, I would Shoot that one, it'll sink, but. Long range acu- acoustical devices, God, LRAD. These orcas are not LRAD. Ready, and that's I've heard the, that that's at work. the pirate one oh, that I'm yeah. talking about. I've heard this at work. You see, God. this chooch has got, well, oh, there's one. We're about to level these orcas. That's, <laughs> that's police. Yeah, built it's into the shield, this. though. Oh, <laughs> wow. What? It's the future. <laughs> Who would have thought in 2023? Look at that. Why aren't forward. they everywhere? You don't got Why isn't there one question. on my phone? I could just what? be like, oh, dude, stop. Yeah. Yeah. Banks a have lot those. of the, So these, just in my quick search to find this article, the, the, the Google search was um, Sonic Gun Cruise Ship. Oh, and no. I got a lot of hits and a lot of good image searches from like 2005. <laughs> so, like I said, it was a long time ago that this happened. Our early 20s. Another one from 2015, <laughs> but that's really the latest that God, I've got could here. Could you imagine where we're at now with that technology? Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yep. Yep. You could take off a limb with, with yes, a sound. Dude. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, is there anything else on this list? Um, Daisy Ridley's Ray movie. We'll launch the Star the Wars next movie? Chapter. Yes. Oh. Launching the next chapter of the Star Wars universe, or lo- at least that's what they say. I just um, want new characters. Are you excited or not excited? You're excited for uh, this? I don't, for Star Wars, I don't get excited until it's here. I'm a little like, 
I'm lukewarm on the Star Wars thing yeah. right now. I've enjoyed the Andor, Andor stuff. That but stuff. The like movies that they have done, like the more the most recent, like you know, trilogy, yeah, that trilogy guess, was, yeah, whatever it was. It was lackluster. Like it didn't like blow my mind or anything. Yeah, no. it didn't, like reinvigorate the franchise for me. So I'm excited for whatever is um, unrelated or news. Star, like new. You know Star I mean? Wars is a very weird. <laughs> franchise because oh, well. these fuckers star wars is a very weird franchise because everything is canon yes right video games cartoons yes movies yes and it all speaks on different aspects of what is happening at that time like the cartoons with bad batch is like oh this is what the stormtroopers were doing the video games is like oh we're gonna talk about this threading where uh the current the current jedi fallen order Jedi survivor with Cal Kestis speaks about the Jedis who are in hiding mm-hmm. during Order 66. And so there's all these different types of, there's so many different avenues for the storytelling because all of it's connected. Yeah. But um, I, you know, I don't know if that like convolutes the story because then you get people who don't know that any of this exists. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, Not you sure. know, people are just like, I don't watch Star Wars. So you're not excited for this new series? No. I'm you're not. not looking forward to it. You want things that are um, I away want new stuff. from what we're I want to be with. freed from the shackles of the. Of Luke. Of the Skywalkers. Like, yeah. I just want, like, let's just start from scratch. I think let's, the story's been told. Yeah. Now we got another person that's attached to that, telling mm-hmm. another story. So we can get this. I, and I, you know, I appreciate the lore, but I just want something new. I'm dealing yeah. with the same shit for four years you. almost. I agree. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Mm-hmm. How's that list? Anything else on there? No, just Nothing the watch else? list. All right, very good. We did it. Um, might not get too heavy into the watch list. I'll be. Uh, My watch list is crazy. I'll be reprimanded by a few people if we don't briefly discuss this. It's very old. Yeah, you text news, me like, "Get the fuck over here." And I was like, "All right." Are you going down in the sub, dude? Mm. Did you watch the video I sent the you? Video the video you said was very funny. You s- <laughs> no. I don't know what's going on. You can't on. watch. I mean, I don't obviously, know what, you can't watch it now. You've got to watch it later. I've been so away from like my phone. Like one day I woke up because, you know, I've been moving. So I had like 250 messages Here's one day. Here's the thing. The world like really came down on the submarine thing yeah. in two buckets. There was one which was like tragedy and dismay. <laughs> yes. And the other was full of memes. Yes. And I was on the meme I, side. People <laughs> are <laughs> incredible. Like they're so smart. Yeah, it's so hilarious. They take nothing serious. I've n- like people take I've nothing. I really serious. appreciated social media over the last couple of weeks. It's Just, been great. Oh my gosh! I think it's horrible. It's a tragedy. It's a- R.I.P. In, in that video, in time. that video, when they started singing "No Air," yes, <laughs> dude, we get to the end. It. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, I'll have to watch it. Oh my gosh! It's I didn't so even good. know. I'm yeah. I'm sorry. I've been. It's. You know how it is when you're moving. You just you get back to your phone. It's 300 yes. messages. You just click and they like clear notifications. Like is there nobody died? Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, well, in the well, they did. In yeah. fact, oh, but uh, too soon or too late. <laughs> I was having a conversation to kind of go full circle on the Titanic sub thing. Mm-hmm. I was having a conversation with some friends, like literally two weeks prior to the Ocean Gate. Titan sub. Ocean Gate. Exploded. Ocean Gate Gate. Yeah. Ocean, Ocean Gate. Gate, Gate. I, 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 it's so weird that the that's Ocean the name Gate of the company. Yeah. Um, and I have tracked with Ocean Gate, actually, before all this happened, I was very aware of Ocean Gate and I tracked with like their, you know, little expeditions and all the stuff that they had done. I'm kind of a little bit of a Titanic nerd. You are. a submersible, submersible yes. nerd. I think all that stuff's really cool. Um, and so... I was I was literally sitting at lunch with some people and I was like, man, I was like, we can go down to the Titanic. Nah. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Could be a lifelong dream. Like let's figure it out. Anyway, I was very pro going to the Titanic, mm-hmm. more or less. And here we are, two weeks later. Boom. Everybody. Or boom. boom. Because boom. It imploded. Um, are you as big a fan as as Joey D? <laughs> Dude, classic photo. I'll never forget this. <laughs> So good. <laughs> he, there's, I think there's a video in there too. When that scene came on, he's like, guys, guys, wait, hold on, guys, guys, hold on. Ah. Oh my God. Dude, classic photo. Never forget. I don't know. No, I'm not going. <laughs> Never forget. But anyway, back to the point of the trip. Money aside. No. No. If you were reassured about the vessel, would you go? Okay, so after it happened, 
it came out that this vessel was bullshit. And yes, that is true. So yeah, that's one piece of this that I would like to clear up. I was very not pro Ocean Gate. I was pro going to see the Titanic. You were pro submarine. I think that that's rad. And if somebody were like, I was not going to spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars, obviously to go see it. But if somebody had offered me a ticket, I would like to think I would have said sure. But I would have investigated the whole Ocean Gate scenario a little bit deeper, because obviously a lot not of people, as deep as they went. Amen. <laughs> There's a lot of people. I can keep going. A lot of people who have been to the Titanic successfully multiple times, but not in this vessel. So I feel like James Cameron is hopefully one in of my them. research. Yeah. I would have come across like a lot of discrepancies, and I would have been like, "This isn't a great idea." But there's footage of is, James Cameron sub. Yeah, that dates years prior to these guys doing it, and his sub in the '90s right. looks way more high tech. Than what they got now in 2023. And to me, the, the crazy thing about this is that after this whole incident happened, I think while they were lost, most of it started coming out of what's the guy's, I can't think of the guy's, the Ocean Gate guy's name. I can't think of his name. Um, just say Ocean Gate. Rush. Right. Of him being interviewed or doing TED Talks, basically bragging about how bullshit it is. <laughs> and yet, everybody was like investing in it to I'll go. Do it. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, and it was, yes, he, it's so interesting. He was going so, down in PVC pipes and <laughs> right, telling people it was right. The and then in one of them, he brags about how it's expired. Um, uh, pre pre preg. Yes. Um. Um. From Boeing, like he he brags that it was past its expiration date, so he got a deal on it. Oh my! Like so, there was. <laughs> There is, oh my God. we don't have enough time left on this episode of course to not. all of the details of it all, but there is like the hull itself. Yes. Is a compromised material like, but composite. Yes. Yes. Um, the composite material is flawed in and of itself. The Ooh. technology though, that was supposed to be like revolutionary in this particular case, the thing that ocean gate had come up with that they thought was like the hack was all of these like acoustical sensors throughout the hull that would monitor the basically like the degradation of it over time. So the idea would be is you'd go down to the Titanic 30, 40, 50 times in this thing. And then you would basically get readouts of the structural integrity of the hull mm. as it was degrading over its lifespan. Over, right. And then at a certain point, when you reach a certain threshold, you basically would scrap the hull and replace the hull. This is obviously like a much cheaper means of doing it compared to some of the more like, you know, traditional I don't want anything degrading as methods. I'm going down. <laughs> like I don't, which is all 100 percent yeah. valid. The concept, though, was like it wasn't like they were just going down in a compromised hull just for the fun of it, or like they were just like, eh, well, whatever. Like they did think that they had a system in place that would help them kind of bypass some of the pitfalls of it. Obviously, and in their defense, this works every day in aviation. This is how. Not exactly the same technology, but an airframe, an aircraft has X number of flight cycles. Right. How yes. many times can it be pressurized and depressurized? Yes. And then it's got to be torn apart and it's got to be inspected and all that stuff. So yes. it works a little differently. So the idea that you can calculate the lifespan of something based on how little bits have failed over time is not crazy necessarily just the material that they chose to do it with i think is the biggest the material okay the yes. biggest because i'm issue. thinking like you can pressure you can pressurize this on land with but like you, yes you can but you can't model it because it's a composite material so basically when you're fusing two different types of materials together there's oof. no way to model that or basically like not like synthesize it but basically you know run tests on it right. from a computer like you steel can, is very easy steel breaks down at yeah. a very specific rate and you can yes it's like a that, defined right. thing right but when you have two different things together you can't you don't know how they're going to interact you can't gotcha. model how they will there interact over time especially when you bought it expired already yes. when you went to home yes. depot like, oh, that's, the, that's the basic <laughs> idea here is that this this uh composite material is pre-impregnated with the adhesive mm -hmm. you heat it up and then it sets but you can only leave it unheated so long before it won't set properly. And so then if he, you're going down in water, water well, is freezing temperatures. Regardless. It's not heated he anymore. He bought yeah. it. No, no, no. That's not even the case. Regardless, he bought it after it was past its date oh. where it could reliably be heated and formed into a solid, reliable tube. So he bought like, the milk after And that's what he's bragging about. Then he sent yes. it 
12,000 feet yes. oh, you know, his, whatever. This guy was his just a running dick. theory was that the system that they had designed would be able to catch any of the flaws or imperfections in the hull, like basically live or like predetermine whether like when this thing was going to essentially do what it did implode. Obviously, the system did not oh, yeah, work clearly. as intended. Yes. Although it could, I mean, maybe it gave the uh, heads sure. up, but right. it just wasn't enough time for them to obviously. Solve I just don't know as a billionaire if this is like my company. I'm cutting corners to do this. Well, that's and that's I mean, why you're a billionaire. That's correct, right? If we've, hmm. yeah, I don't know. It all of a sudden happened. Anyway, yeah, I mean, that's we see like Elon just does crazy shit because he can just do crazy shit. Yeah. You know, he says crazy shit. He's got enough money to do it. Yeah. But he never puts himself in there. That's the, that's, I think, that, the difference that was the here. One. Now, I, I find it interesting that he took a bunch of other rich people with him. Yeah. Well, you kind of, I mean, you to had be to be. Really. Did the you tickets hear the, are not the cheap. conspiracy theories about it, though? The tickets are not cheap. About the, I've seen some wild conspiracy theories surrounding this. If, all right, I if we're going to, we're going to run out of tape here in a second. So if we're going to go into no, further conspiracy theories. We talk about this amongst um, ourselves. I don't really give a, I don't really care. <laughs> I just, <laughs> we're going to get cut off, so I just don't want you to keep rolling. That was my wife. All, All right, right. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Okay, great. More Quality. for more on Titan. Carry on with your conspiracy theories. I love yeah, I mean, I'm very don't, interested in this. Yeah, again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist oh, uh, per se. I, I will Dude, I indulge. I will indulge. Theory. I will. But I, I saw one, because they don't have any substantial ground to stand on. These social media conspiracy theorist people are just kind of like... Shots in the dark. They're like hoteps. They're they're doomsday preppers. They're just ridiculous people. Yeah, but you know, yeah. every once in a while, <laughs> one's right. Once in every blue moon, a conspiracy theorist is right. And I'm gonna need you to get to the conspiracy theory. I'm very excited. oh, it was one that they all went down in this sub to fake their deaths, so they didn't really go. Like they once they submerged, they got out. Oh, you're saying that there's no bodies? Yeah, they once they submerged, they got out of the sub. I get into you. like some another vessel or the sub. They was like two, like I just seen a bunch of stuff. There was like two subs. I think one went down and then they didn't never really. I think go. the logistics of opening it up underwater are pretty challenging. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the all sub of this is, is false. Bolted together. And I don't I think it. Crack. I don't think it is something that you can just take apart. No, these people are dead. Okay, so you're not a believer of the conspiracy. No. Theory. Oh yeah, dead. they're definitely dead. Oh, they're dead. That's a door now. I am more I of a believer. Of I can give you. I can give you the. Do you know? Do you know the background on that? No. I mean, this, we can talk about it now, or we can talk about it later. No, I said it. Go. Background on what? Dead, dead is, is a doornail. doornail. Oh, I looked into this a while ago. So the saying "dead is a doornail." So back when you were, you know, manufacturing doors, okay? Mm -hmm. You were laminating wood and you were making them strong and whatever, and you would tap, tap, tap nails through. Sure. Well, nails are very expensive because they're steel or mm -hmm. they're whatever, iron. Yes. They've got to be made and they've got to be manufactured and it takes time. So you would reuse them whenever you could. So, but with a door, it needs to be sturdy and it needs to never come apart. So they would tap, tap, tap a nail through and then hit down it's to dead. bend the end. So oh, that it would so never it, back out. I've seen that, like in a casket. Right. So, so the nail is dead as a doornail. It can never dead. be rebent and backed oh, out and reused because it'll always bend again. So mm -hmm. that's where the saying dead as a doornail comes from. This guy. I call you the smartest man alive because this you guy. have information that I would never think you would have. Because no one ever needs it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the But he had it the right tism. there, dead as a doornail. But here we are, tism. dude. Four but people are touching the tizzle. <laughs> anyway, continue. Apologies. Oh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't think any of the conspiracy conspiracy theories are true. But that was the one of the main ones that I kept seeing was that they they did this to fake their deaths, and they're actually alive. But I definitely don't think they're alive. No, they're dead as a doornail. I do <laughs> think the conspiracy theory around the media amplifying the coverage of the event. To cover other things is probably accurate. What are the oh, other no. things? What are the other things? Like there are other things that happened 
Oh, this like, should have been newsworthy, but we're didn't. newsworthy, but we're not covered because everybody was hyper focused on the sub. I do think there is intention behind some of those things. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to say that like a deep state like blew this sub up, but I do think a moment was like seized, an opportunity was seized well, in the media. Like what? What's like what? What was overshadowed? There were a couple of big things that happened that week. Um, I have them on my phone. Oh, good. Somewhere. I'm glad you've already done this. Well, the Flash was released. That was part of it. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I, don't yes. you, I don't know if you looked over, Courtney, but he said, I feel like things were not reported. And I went, the Flash. wake computer. And I went, Google, what am I Googling? <laughs> he goes, I have it on my phone. I was like, excellent. I got to scroll back Relax. because this was in a conversation from a while ago. So feel free. No, nah, those people are, you know, it's unfortunate. Like, you know, in, in, in the guise of of comedy, like, you know, we make jokes or whatever. But I don't ever want to see anyone lose their lives. But I mean, you go down in a boat made of, like, Legos and shit. Like, what do you and think the, is going to happen? And the British-Pakistani guy and his son that went down. Yeah. yeah. And the idea that he just guilted his son into a Father's mm-hmm. Day gift. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I feel bad for. Yeah, yeah. bro. I feel bad he for He said he didn't want to go. I don't want to do that. And he's like, I want to do son. this. <laughs> you're my son. That's it's my father's, father's day. day. We're yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm not going. He he could be living his life with his father's billions of dollars now with a hot chick on the beach. No, now he's not here because of his dickhead father. One of the, <laughs> oh, I because, you, because you want to go see a boat that you couldn't get on a hundred years ago. I also thought it was interesting that they talked very much about the CEO and about the the British Pakistani guy, mm-hmm. and then no one else. Like there yeah, was there were two people. people I like looked at the list. Sorry, and who I, are the people? There's five people, right? No, yeah. there's the CEO. So, yeah, there was a guy that like worked alongside him. There was the Titanic dude, mm-hmm. and then there was the or the Titanic guy and the guy that worked alongside him. That's the same person. Then there was the British. Like billionaire, sure, yes. Then there was the Pakistani guy and his kid. That was the five. So, and and my thing is, the news coverage <laughs> covered the CEO, the, the Pakistani the, guy, in, and his important son. Important people yeah. in quotes. And yeah. I feel like, and well, I didn't even know that there was a Titanic expert, like the yes. leading Titanic expert. Yeah, I didn't even yeah, realize yeah. he was on board. Well, a you got to mm-hmm. talk about the CEO because mm-hmm. everybody of wants course. to blame somebody. Sure. So you got to mm-hmm. talk about him and sure. the father and the son thing. That's, that's like that's the sympathy the play. Sympathy like that's the story, sad part. Yeah. That's a sad thing. Like the one billionaire guy that was by himself, and then the Titanic expert. Uh, you know, yeah. what are you gonna do? Anyway, uh, one of the not um, the dog anybody. Anyway, uh, okay. So <laughs> back to the things that happened that week. Oh, now, yeah, yeah, what happened? I'll, I had to scroll really far back to get to this. Um, so a couple of things that happened during that time frame, mm-hmm. and this is, there's some loose things in here, but um, Hunter Biden, he's guilty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. The, yes. He did. The tax thing. He yes. did. Yes. Stop. Right now, yes, he did. He uh, did. Baby Jesus, Hunter Biden. <laughs> Hunter he can do no wrong. Hunter Biden, sweet cocaine, baby Jesus, <laughs> sweet cocaine, baby Jesus, Hunter Biden okay. can do no wrong in my eyes. <laughs> I'm just saying, he did. They're happen, gonna get him with something. the same week. All right. I love that video montage. Biden won fair and square of Hunter Biden. It's just him turning up. <laughs> yes. Strippers and cocaine. Slight pause. Guns. Slight pause. Has anyone seen the news of him finding cocaine in the it, White House? Because Hunter went there. That's <laughs> why. I didn't see that. Donald, you didn't see that? And no. Donald Trump tweeted, or well, Donald Trump on whatever he's on. He truthed it. He, he truthed the one. He re-truthed and re truthed. <laughs> Wild he was man. like, are we seriously going to believe that we have Sleepy Joe and Hunter Biden in the White House that this cocaine doesn't belong to them? Oh, it absolutely belongs to them. Brilliant. We, we, you forget that, like, but politicians are politicians and government jobs and whatever. Where, these are p- still people. Mm-hmm. These are still people who have regular everyday lives. Clearly, Joe Biden, the president of the United States, has, uh, I'm not going to say crackhead. But he's got a son that's out here. He's got a troubled son. Troubled son who's out here doing the absolute most. When Joe Biden has to go be a father, sometimes you got to go be a father and be hands on. So if there are traces of cocaine, who's to say that it's not from him having to go, you know, be 
a father to his son yeah. who's just a knucklehead. You know what I'm saying? 100%. All that's true. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, the Ukraine counteroffensive <laughs> launched. Wait, 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 wait. During Not to be frame. confused with the Wagner group, right? No, this came later. This is this came later. So the okay. Ukraine counteroffensive, which has been talked about for a very long time. Obviously, they took the winter off. Yeah. So the conditions are too brutal. But Ukraine was having, they were prepping for a very large scale counteroffensive. We were helping them plan for it. A lot of people were involved in it, basically to obviously combat Russia. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not saying that these things are. I'm just it's pointing, just a lot I'm of just stuff. I'm just pointing some stuff. And out then guys. the 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 coup that happened in Russia with the Wagner Group that was part of that. Too. Was, that I, I think, that, I was think later. that was post. That yeah. was post. I think well, that was. So here's the thing: was it? Did it happen at the time we were talking about this stuff? Yes, but it wasn't during the week of the incident. Gotcha. Right? We, You're right. We that knew, time is a little off. Yeah. We knew that this the sub was, was lost before the Wagner Group thing kicked off. Um, now the you know could you argue like. The Wagner Group thing probably started earlier than when we found out about it. I don't know. Can I say that's anyway. a whack name for a militia? <sighs> for sure. a Russian militia too? The Wagner Group? Yeah. <laughs> Are you just investing really? stocks and bonds as well? <laughs> like, Venture capitalism. Yeah. Guys. Like, give me something tough. Like, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, something like, hey, listen, tell, give me something I can't pronounce. Right. <laughs> As an American, sounds, give me something I can't that pronounce. That sounds, you know, menacing. Like, you know, the Wagner killers, uh, you know, the Wagner group. Are you coming to consolidate my loans? <laughs> like, it just doesn't. It's one way of putting it. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't sound like. I'm not terrified. <laughs> we will consolidate loans. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if you tell me the Wagner group is coming for me, I'm just like, I'm expecting, you know, some Jewish guys in some suits. Like, I'm not, I'm not expecting a militia to roll up with AK-47s. Like, I'm not, I'm not. Well. I was like, oh, let me go get my binder. That's <laughs> it. You never see it coming. It's a different day and age, dude. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Got to be marketable. <laughs> okay. So you're a hard pass on the Titanic. You're not going to go down. Uh, um. If somebody hit you, you, you up, we talked about this with the with space a reliable thing. Reliable vessel. I'd go with James. Cam- I would go with someone who's done it multiple times and came back. Sure, because I think there are some discrepancies here. Like one, like the Ocean Gate thing was not just going down to the Titanic. It was going down to the Titanic in like an experimental yes. vessel. Yes, yes, which is a huge difference. Difference than going down in because there are vessels that are regulated and certified by governments as yeah you know yeah, absolutely rated for that shit. yeah this is gonna work did you watch the life on earth with will smith and the vessel he went down in Mm-mm. incredible like they had everything like snacks espresso like, machine <laughs> right? like, snacks. they had everything it was glass with like sensors everywhere um when this happened he used a ps5 controller not just <laughs> not a three a Xbox, right? Right. Right. um but like it was you know they 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 had still had communication back up to the vessel. There's yes. screens. Like everything is monitored. Like the the pilot is just kind of like, yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting piece. The lack of like consistent communication. Yeah. Or the lack of like voice communication. It was only text-based communication. I thought that was really interesting yeah. and odd. That technology obviously exists. It must just, maybe it's just a cost thing. It must be a cost thing. It just seems like this sub was built in like 1989. You know, <laughs> we, didn't, wasn't we didn't really get much of that, of the communication piece. Obviously, we we heard that it was every 15 minutes or whatever it yeah. was, and it was text-based. And the the what we saw was that it was guidance-based. Okay, you're you're too far south, you have to head, you know, head mm, left, head right, yeah. whatever it is. But in my mind, if you're not in real time, I mean, okay, let me reset. The whole thing is obviously you can't get GPS. So how does the mothership direct you? You're too far left, go right. Like, is so there some sort of sensor? It's not. Yeah, it's not Find GPS. My. It's not like GPS per se, but there right. are like there is like a tracking component on the sub, which is housed separately than like from within the hull of the ship. They had right? a little air it's tag completely dangling from separate. the top. <laughs> More or less, it's like it's housed completely separately. So even if like and it's powered separately, it's. Uh, pressurized separately, all of those things. So if the vessel itself, like if the hull loses 
you know, electricity, whatever, like the whole hole sure. should just go completely dead. The transponder and the tracker that is on there should still remain intact. Like it's intact like the, bla- it's like the black box on the airplane. More or less, but it allows you to still see the sub and to see where it is. So that was like one of the, one of the reasons why like James Cameron, for example, was saying Monday morning when they found out that it had gone offline, he was like, we knew it imploded immediately because if you lose comms and you lose tracking, that means that it, Im- like there's no yeah. other option. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you lose comms, mm-hmm. that's one sure, thing. There's a that fallback. just means there's a, there, that just means that comms failed. You're still tracking the sub, but if you lose both at the exact same time, they're the detached, only way that that's possible detached from each other, yeah. two separate systems fail simultaneously. The only way for that to happen is an implosion right? or something catastrophic. It's just interesting that, you know, so they still had a track. There is a tracking component on there, but it's not yeah. GPS. Based. I just no, it's I understand based between the ship, the vessel up top. I, I totally get that it's not GPS. I'm just I, I'm more I'm more kind of on the same argument you guys are. We've done this before, and there's been real time communications. If they mm-hmm. can see where it is, why can they not do real time? Maybe it's cost savings. Maybe it's you know it's whatever. It's got to be it is. a cost. And yeah. a real quick, you just said black box, and there was a comment on Reddit that like really struck me, and it was something like somebody said, "Well, you know, when they find the wreckage, you know, maybe we'll figure out what went wrong." And the comment basically said, "These motherfuckers went down with a glued together straw in a, inside <laughs> a glued together straw." And you're thinking black box is where they put the money? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. A glued straw <laughs> is so disgusting. <clears throat> There First is a there is a component on the uh, submersible that is technically considered the black box. It does record all the data and everything like that. Again, same thing is housed separately. And when they pulled, there was photos of the wreckage being offloaded from the recovery ship. Mm-hmm. And in those photos, you they are there are people that can actually see where that box has been removed. So the idea is that it was recovered and it was taken off the wreckage at some point. If not, it's somewhere down on the sea yeah. floor lost or something like that. But somebody was noting that like that component had been removed from the wreckage. They could see where it like in the photos it was. Those right. black boxes anymore. are highly reliable. Yeah, I'm sure that that whatever is in there is probably one. fine. And all of those oh god. <laughs> All of those components, those things are all like, those are not designed by Ocean. Those are going. all separate things. I have no Super idea. Super reliable. Uh, um, yeah, man. I don't know. It's just, it's just, as unfortunate as it is, it's just crazy be- bewildering that you would. Home grow DIY. What this. rich people will do is I think I <laughs> think know, the like words that you're going get over for. It. You know, that so they- technically, the two vessels that um, James Cameron went down on for the Titanic were actually government yes vessel vessels. Yes. He did not he did not personally he didn't have build his own. those. He did when he went down to the Mariana Trench. So that was mm, his okay. like that was that's the deepest point on Earth. Yeah, that vessel he did design and build himself with like a team of guys. It wasn't like, you know, he made Terminator. You think like he's going involved. down to die but in the water? He, that no. was his own design. That was not government yeah. issued or anything like that. It was rated and it was certified, but, um, he has a documentary on both of those expeditions, but the Mariana trench one, he had comms the whole time and video. So it is possible. It's absolutely possible. Yeah. And that's yeah. three yeah. times deeper. So you can do it. It's just gotta be a money thing. I would guess. Uh-huh. If you're a billionaire, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, so you got five billionaires, two hundred. So they they spent over what? It was two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Quarter mil each. Quarter mil each. So yeah. we're at one point two five to go. There's three and paying, this, probably three paying customers. Yes. How how much do you think it costs to put together a vessel substantial enough to take you down for a successful trip and bring you back? That's well, what's even cutting corners. What's his face? I cannot remember his damn name. James Jim, Cameron. No, the the Stockton Rush. Stockton Rush. Stockton I can't. Rush. I can't remember his name. He said that they're not even profiting off of it. Correct. Like so there the are big, ways from breaking even. The big issue is not really the cost as much as it is the vessel itself. So you can send one or two people down that deep without too much complication. But when you and, and inexpensively 
all things considered. Mm -hmm. But when you want to send five or more people, you want to send a lot of people down, you have to have a much larger vessel. That's where it becomes cost prohibitive. And that's why they were trying to design different technologies and different like hulls to go down to that level. Essentially, like most things that go down that deep are designed like in a sphere, yeah. right? Of a solid material. So mm. acrylic is big. Acrylic. Um, yeah. like steel, stuff like that. Those obviously can be modeled against the pressures and the depths mm -hmm. at, you know, those points or whatever. But that like if you look at any of the submersibles that go super deep that take a person, that's how they're designed is a sphere. Yeah, the Will Smith thing. It was thing. like a sphere with yes, like correct. landing but pads. If you're gonna take five roof. people and you're gonna go to like depths of that, you gotta get, gonna go to gotta those get depths, larger. Yeah. You gotta build a bigger sphere. Yeah, and, then scale it, it. and then it just becomes like again, the cost just becomes pretty ridiculous. It comes. It just becomes considerably more than having a hull or something. Now you're building just, an actual submarine versus a submersive vehicle. It's so just I'm, a different thing. I'm trying to. I'm really trying to figure this out right now, and I'm having a lot of trouble with it. So you're familiar with Chris Hadfield, the Canadian mm -hmm. astronaut. Yes, yes. He's yes, very yes. popular on YouTube from his you know videos. Mm -hmm. So there was a video a few years ago of him going in some submersible, shaking a can of soda. And then showing that it didn't explode because there's pressure on the vessel right. and you know whatever it is, and and I'm I cannot fig I cannot find it, but the vessel that he's in clearly is huge. Sure, right? There's yeah. computer screens like or whatever. A picture it is. Of and I'm trying to figure out how deep that was, and I feel like that was fairly deep and fairly large at the same time. I wonder. How I mean, that it's feels probably the body. it's probably like a submarine, but the misconception is with like submarines is the how deep they actually yes, go. Yes, right, right. They're not uh, actually a, that deep. A U.S. Right. Navy submarine can go a few hundred feet, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, at best, right? Yeah. I'm not aware of like vessels. I mean, I'm not aware of any that have gone like to Titanic depths or deeper that weren't in a sphere design uh, outside of Ocean Gate. Obviously, we know what happened yeah. with that. Yeah. But even if you look at like the ones that James Cameron went on originally, the ones that were the government issued ones, they're still like spherical in design. They they had like longer bodies, but the actual housing that the people were in were still like spheres. Mm -hmm. It's just that it that obviously shape is just what is the most resistant to those pressures at that, you know, whatever. But in either case. Um I don't know about that vessel, what he's on. I don't know what would be like at those depths with a room. Yeah, he says it's two and a half feet of atmosphere, so that's not a lot. Never mind. I take away what I just said. It stinks. But yes, I would still go. I would not go, um, obviously, ideally in an experimental vehicle, just like I would go to space. I've said it many times. Stand yeah, by. I don't, I think, I don't know. I think I would go to space before I would go in the ocean. Because like, ultimately, if this shit fucks up in space, I'm dead. If it fucks up in the ocean, like there's time, there's a enough time for me to realize I'm dying. I don't want to realize no. that I'm no. dying. No. Really? No. I think it's the opposite. You think so? I think it's the opposite, 100%. Yes. I think if you're in space, yes. again, depending on like at what degree you're in space, I think if you're on like a SpaceX vehicle or something that's like just above like, or like, you know, I don't know. Atmospheric orbit or level, yeah. yeah. I think if things start to go south, I think you can drop back in pretty quick. And I think that there are like emergency protocols for- you know, you Okay. Can, throw out some parachutes, that kind of stuff. I think there are ways of recovering vehicles. I'm talking about no if recovery. you're talking about dying, yeah. like some shit explodes, no, you're going to be alive in space for a good amount of time. Wow. Like upwards of two minutes. At least I get the view. That's true. That is the least, yes. I mean. Meanwhile, meanwhile your blood is literally boiling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but in the ocean, I'm freezing and a shark just no, comes. But no, but you won't. You won't it, feel it? It happens in less than a. Oh, they were man. saying, um, Anderson also, Cooper had um, James Cameron on. Yeah. And he said something like, the body recognizes a feeling in X amount of nanoseconds but a pressure vessel of that size at that pressure would collapse in half those nanoseconds. Mm, so yeah. you would be completely crushed before the signal even made it from your hand yeah. to your brain. Mm, 
Yeah. Now, what if what if we're not dying of pressurized? Yeah, You're like nothing. drowning. Yeah, now I'm drowning. Before, like water before got you, in. Before you drowned, That's, the pressure would still kill you because you're still too Yeah, deep. there's still a hole letting mm. water in, yeah. Once that hole opens, you're dead. Yeah. Mm. As hey. soon as as, as soon as the fact, drop of water gets in. In fact, in. the crush is probably what lets the water in because if yeah. water's just yeah. dripping in. And then this thing breaks apart. And it, all right, let's let's just say in a in this in this scenario, we're down there and then Boom, this thing just cracks apart like an egg, and I'm just floating in the water. Nope. I'm dead. It doesn't just it crack doesn't apart. Crack. It's, it's just too gonna much go, pressure it's gonna for it like, to crack. Like, it just, like, squeezes. And I've seen those sound. videos where the yeah. bottle of water. Maybe yeah. a thousand maybe <laughs> a thousand feet up, maybe it cracks and that happens. Okay, that's what I'm too, thinking. I'm you're like, too deep for any anything non-instantaneous to <laughs> yes. My luck... We're like 500 feet in, and this thing just cracks in half, and my shoestring gets caught. But if you're 500 feet, I think it's 500 if you're 500 feet, feet you probably you'd, you'd have a chance feet, of survival. I think you'd have you can get the bends, and yeah. if you can muster your way up, yeah, you 500 might live. feet isn't is not, not impossible. Getting, I'm not getting up. The you deepest, not, the deepest dive, for open sea diving by a human was 530 meters, 1,700 feet in the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you'll be... There's actually a Netflix documentary meters. on this coming out. So you got time that by three because a meter is a... Well, I gave it to you, 1,750 feet. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah so 500... <laughs> yeah, American, in, in free to be a meter, 1,750 yeah. feet. American numbers. numbers. So put in yards for me. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a decent chance at 500 feet. Okay. The all, also, like, the chances... I don't, I don't. The chances of a vessel like that collapsing at 500 feet is pretty much zero. I mean, there's just I, such the pressure is so low. If you put it together, I trust you. If I put I it together, I appreciate no. that. I wouldn't send you down in it, but it's very kind. All right. So, and I'm really quickly trying to find the meters, the, the depth here. Uh, so there was a, there was an accident on a, an oil rig in 90 shit, 95. I feel like 1983, 1983. Okay. So it was, Essentially, they were deep sea divers doing work. And the way it worked is that they're in a pressurized vessel that's lowered down at pressure and then raised up every night when their shift ends, but kept at pressure so they don't have to decompress and go through them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it takes, you know, hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. to do that. And I'm trying to skim through. I read this whole article, but I'm trying to skim through it. The depth was something like nine atmospheres and one of their support divers hit the wrong switch and depressurized the whole system. And it essentially sucked the guy out. Like he was in the middle of closing the pressure door in order to disconnect and the diver outside accidentally relieved the pressure. And he was blown out through the, the door that was open this wide and shot 30 feet above <laughs> and everybody died instantly. And that was only at nine atmospheres which is a few hundred, you know, a few hundred feet, you know, down. So the, what you're basically saying is if you go down, we saw that record was 1700 feet. If you go down slowly, sure, you can like deal with it. But the, the Insta instantaneous. Instantly it's shooting you back through up through the water. Correct. Right. No. no yeah. Thing. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you hit the top of the water and go. Pew, and die, and fall back into the ocean. Ah, I do not want to be fish food. I'm there sorry. you go. I don't. I don't want to be fish food. I don't know yeah. if you will be, man. Just don't go down there. You'll be all right. That's right. All right, let's let's wrap this. Black people don't swim that deep. Let's wrap this, dude. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I can sense our. I can sense we're all tired. Yeah, Isaiah's falling asleep. Cheers, to you, to your move, to you and your to vacation, us, to us being back, and to us being back. We'll see you guys next week.